us online this day. A few announcements. Salem's soup, supper, and services continue. They actually conclude this Wednesday. So 6.30 p.m. we have our soup supper in Bethany Hall, and 7.30 we continue uh, to worship here with the services of testimony, where people speak about their faith and their lives, and uh, the Salem players passion vignettes glimpses into the life of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. So all are welcome to participate for our last Lenten soup supper and service of the year. Um, we Holy Week is upon us, it's next week. Um, and so with that in mind, our Easter garden flower form is in your bulletin. If you would like to donate um, to the flowers that will be all over our sanctuary on, sun on Easter Sunday, you can fill out this form and put it in your offering plate. A quick uh, just talking through our Holy Week schedule, next, next week Mary Miller and the Salem Senior Choir will be doing a Palm Sunday cantata called Colors of Grace. We'll have Monday, Thursday at 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. And at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we'll have a few youth who will be receiving their First Communion. On Good Friday, uh, we'll have services at 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Our Easter Vigil is that Saturday at 8 p.m. And I will say, if you really liked our prelude with the flute music, uh, that the flautist, Rachel, will be there on the Easter Vigil. We're doing music from Holden Evening Prayer, which is a really special, beautiful um, liturgy, and we'll be using that in the Easter Vigil. So the Easter Vigil is at Saturday at 8 p.m. And then, of course, Easter Sunday here, 8, 15, and 11, on March 31st, with an Easter egg hunt in between. So all are welcome to that. We have a few um, donation drives out in the narthex, both Undy Sundays and for uh, the University of Maryland Baltimore uh, College international students. So I advise you to take a look at that out there. Um, our social ministry potluck will be Sunday, April 14th at 5 p.m. to benefit Marla Ridge. And Pastor Amy Asendorf Berger will be presenting, so it will be certainly a treat. And then finally, um, this marks four years since the world changed with the pandemic. Um, and both Guy Davis and Joey Morgan have made a video to kind of commemorate where were we then four years ago and kind of how Salem responded to that. So they have a video of it on our Salem website. So if you just kind of want to get a little bit of our more recent history, uh, you can check out our website. Are there other announcements to lift before the congregation? Yes, please, Pastor Dave. Just mention a big uh, thank you to the property committee. Uh, you might notice that oh, there yes. is an automatic door opener. Uh, on the, if you're leaving the building, the four doors back here going out to the parking lot, on the far right, there's just an automatic opener. You know, hit it, boom, it opens. And then coming in, that same door, it'll be on your far left, of course, coming in. There's a little opener outside on the pillar, and just wave in front of that, and the door will open for you. So thank you, Rusty Schaefer. And and uh, it took a couple days, but it, it got done, so thank you. Yes, it's one step to make us um, more accessible. So, with that in mind, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we begin our worship this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I invite you to sit or kneel. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, 
and for sins only you know. Forgive us. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please rise for our opening hymn. Let us 
pray together. O oh God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. From Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, 
he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Thank, word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No! It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated, and all of our young friends are invited forward with Miss Veronica. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Okay. Does everybody here know how to play Simon Says? Yes? yes? <laughs> all right, all right. So, okay, I'm going to be Simon. Ready? Okay, Simon Says, touch your nose. Okay, hold on. I'll give us a second. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> all right. Simon Says, clap one time. Simon Says, stand up. Simon says jump, if you can. Okay. All right. Simon says spin around. Mm hmm I like it. All right. Simon says close your eyes for five seconds. I'm going to count down, okay? Five seconds. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> <laughs> You guys, you guys did a great job following along today, and you didn't even know what the future had for you, but you still listened. In our gospel, Jesus tells us that if we follow him, then we will have eternal life, and he gives us the Ten Commandments so that we know how to follow him. So, just like how you followed Veronica and Simon says, that's how Jesus wants, him, wants us to follow him. And um, here's some eternal life.
Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for showing us the way by sending us your Son, and help us to follow you so that we may receive eternal life in your kingdom. Amen. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So what do you think? Were those Greeks that wanted to see Jesus, were they spiritual but not religious? You know, you might have friends who self-identify that way as spiritual but not religious. Uh, I encounter folks like that from time to time. It wasn't long ago I was in front of the church and someone stopped me. Oh, are you the pastor? You know, we were back and forth. And so I said, oh, what, what tradition are you part of? You belong to a congregation. Oh, pastor, I'm spiritual but not religious. Okay, um, that's fair. And, you know, to be charitable, uh, the, these folks, uh, and it's a, a growing number, as we all know, it's a growing number in, in, the, in the United States, these spiritual but not religious folks lean into the mystery. They, I think they deeply appreciate a sense of the divine. You know, some of them may assert that they believe in God, but they don't have any use for organized religion. Now, organized is an interesting word, isn't it? <laughs> How organized are we at times, right? Uh, you know, not, not so very. Uh, maybe we want to be more organized. Who knows? But um, the, these folks, they, they don't have any use for worship life or, or liturgies or doctrine or dogma and, and all the stuff that, that goes with institutions and denominations and congregations. And, well, you know, they, they, they don't have need for that. It doesn't edify them. It doesn't scratch their spiritual itch. Now, the Greeks that show up to see Jesus, uh, some think they were God-fearers. A God-fearer was a name for Gentiles who had converted to Judaism. And uh, we're not sure whether they were God-fearers, no more than we're sure that they were spiritual but not religious. Um, however, if you look at the text closely, it says they had come to worship at the festival. That would be the festival of the Passover. So, in my opinion, I, I do think that they were probably uh, uh, Jews or, or practiced the, the, the organized uh, Jewish faith. Now, they ask Philip, oh, hey, can we see Jesus? We would like to see Jesus. And Philip goes to Andrew, and Philip and Andrew go to Jesus, and they uh, say, hey, these Greeks want to see you. And Jesus seemingly ignores the question, and he just starts... Uh, rambling in the way he can do sometimes, and he says, the hour has come for me to be glorified, for the Son of Man to be glorified. Oh, Jesus, give us a little of that glory. Let's rub it all over, right? We're all into that. No, 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 no. He, he goes on, he says, wait a minute. He says, the hour has come to die like a seed falling into the earth. The seed has to die in order to bear fruit. And it's very obvious that's what's going to happen to me. And then the counterintuitive message, well, if you love your life, guess what? You're going to lose it. And for those who hate their life in this world, they will gain it for eternal life. So, if you want to be my servant, you must follow me, but not into glory, into death. Hey, Jesus, these Greeks are still standing out here. Are you going to see them or not? But Jesus, he's on a roll. He continues, now my soul is troubled. Because part of me doesn't want to face this hour that I'm talking about. And part of me doesn't want to die, but the hour has come 
Father, glorify your name. And then a voice from heaven comes, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And all the people standing around, oh, was it thunder that we heard? Or some said it was an angel that was speaking to Jesus. Right? We're not sure. And then Jesus tells them, oh, Wait a minute, that, 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 that wasn't for me, that was for you. It was for your sake. But I do wonder, I do wonder that his soul was troubled. Wasn't it reassuring to hear his father's voice? Well, Jesus goes on. Now the time... For judgment has come when the ruler of this world will be driven out and I will be lifted up and I will draw all people to myself. I will draw all people to myself. And then the Gospel writer John lets us know that Jesus is talking about what kind of death he's going to die. He's going to die a death on the cross. So what do you think? Did the Greeks ever get to see Jesus? Hmm? We're unsure. We hope they did, but we don't know. But guess what? You and I, we get to see Jesus. Oh, not the Jesus recorded in Scripture. We get to see Jesus in each other. We get to see Jesus in this community. We get to see Jesus in the Eucharist, in the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, through the liturgy, through the liturgy, we get to see Jesus. John Updike said that the liturgy are like paths worn smooth into the raw terrain of our hearts. Isn't that beautiful? like paths worn smooth into the raw terrain of our hearts. In community, we can share the gospel. In community, we can not just share it, we can be the gospel, we can embody the gospel. We can do things together that we cannot do by ourselves. How many of you can host the nine, twelve step groups that meet here? Pastor Carolyn, I don't see any hands going up. Or the two, the two pro bono counselors. Or the several nonprofit boards that meet here. Or the men's barbershop group. Oh, you would like them. They, they each had a house and home, let me tell you. I've watched them. <laughs> yeah, all these groups that need a place to hang their hat to meet, we open the doors of this beloved church that's been bequeathed to us a gift over these 175 years, right? By ourselves, we can't make how many quilts? Hundreds, hundreds of quilts for the poor. We can't do that. Together, we can. Together, we can. We can gather things, donations, and money and make a positive difference in this world. Now, that doesn't mean, because we're in community, that everything's just fine and dandy, right? We are imperfect, we're flawed, we're sinners, we're people of faith, but people with questions and people with doubts, and that's all good. We don't have all the answers, but we have faith in God, we trust God. And I know community can be messy sometimes. It can even be hurtful sometimes. But I would not trade it for the world. I would not trade it for those who dismiss the value of community. I'm thankful that God has drawn us together, and we are stronger and better for it. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Together, let us share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. We give you thanks, O God, that the Spirit has drawn us together in community to care for one another, to love one another, to do together what we cannot do ourselves. Keep us centered in Christ Jesus. May we reflect your love to all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Help us to cherish and preserve the rich and complex diversity of all living things. Advance the work of all the environmental organizations striving to restore and protect our planet. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire justice, peace, and plenty for all people. We pray for the people of Gaza. We pray for an immediate ceasefire and return of the hostages held by Hamas. We pray for the end of Russia's savage invasion of the Ukraine, its continual bombing and missile attacks upon civilians. We pray for peace. We pray for all who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Be with all who work for human rights. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of reconciliation, you restore what is broken. You revive the weary. You lift up the brokenhearted. We pray for all who are experiencing estrangement conflict or abuse in families or other relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of every time and place, you are always with us. Support the ministries of prayer and study in this congregation, especially the men's prayer breakfast, the Tuesday night group, the adult forum, in the fourth Monday Bible study. We pray this day for all who long for healing. For whom and for what else shall we pray this day? We also remember in our prayers today Tina Hall Stephanie Pileski, Judy Rotz, Kathy Stump, Marley Toscano, Tom Brzezinski's friend Rachel. We give thanks that Barb Meyer's biopsy results were negative, and we pray for Louise Ricketts, who is awaiting her biopsy results. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of promise. We give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially Patrick, missionary to Ireland. We pray this day for Rachel and Marty Smith and their family who mourn the death of Rachel's father, Don Kuby. Comfort them with the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace. 
Receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ our Savior. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another. God's peace. To all at home, God's peace to you. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen.
Lord our God. You created us in your image, and in the mystery of your great love for us, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, born by Mary, by the power of the Spirit. Led by that Spirit, he was tempted, as we are tempted. He proclaimed forgiveness to sinners. He loved even his enemies. Despised and rejected, he bore the sins of the world and he stretched out his arms on the cross. And by this all-sufficient sacrifice, he has drawn all people to himself, giving his life as a ransom for many. As we gather in his name and celebrate his promise, send your spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the very body and blood of Jesus Christ, Redeemer of the world, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, saying to the disciples, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, by your Son's life-giving passion and death, his resurrection and ascension into glory. Our Lord Jesus constantly intercedes for us because he has claimed us as his own. As we now share together this bread of life and cup of salvation, unite us with all your faithful people in the forgiveness of sins. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us On communion. Um, we are, we'll commune. You're invited to come up through the aisle. Pastor Dave and I will commune with the bread. There are communion assistants to bless your cup. There are brass trays with little cups. The clear cups are wine. The purple cups are grape juice. After you have communed, you're invited to go down the side aisle. And the most important information is, is that this is a table of hospitality. This is a table of welcome. All are invited to this table to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen.
please rise in body or in spirit. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Welcome, members of Salem Lutheran Church in Catonsville and members of Faith Lutheran Church in Cockeysville. I am Pastor Sarah Garrett Cray. I am Pastor Micah Cray, uh, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in Cockeysville. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to our joint worship service, Salem Lutheran Church in Catonsville and Faith Lutheran Church in Cockeysville have come together to worship. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. I'm Pastor David Asendorf. And I'm Pastor Sarah Garrett Cray, the Associate Pastor at Salem Lutheran Church in Catonsville. I'm Pastor Micah Cray. Uh...
who have been redeemed, take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Thank you.